one. It's a great time to revisit No Not Todays. And No Not Todays, in my mind, is everybody over the last three years that kind of nearly did some business with you. Mm -hmm. And we all know the ones, right? The ones that, you know, everything felt good, but the timing was off, or they had some other stuff that was happening internally within the organization that just never quite came over the finish line. Take the time to proactively go through the work you've already harvested and see what might be right for the picking today and just reach out and start some of those conversations. Easy way to start those conversations is with the truth. And it's a three-stage formula, which is a polite opening, followed by a mutually agreeable fact, followed by a question. So the polite opening is, you know, hi, it's Phil calling. It could be hi, it's John calling from sales pot, right? There's the polite opening. Mm -hmm. um, mutually agreeable fact that's so simple on this is, is I was thinking about you today. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Back to another fact. We were speaking last February about the fact that you wanted to achieve blank, blank, and blank. Now we need a question on the end to engage the conversation. Question is, have you found a solution for that challenge yet? Two. And one of the ways we do a transition question is to say, you know, when I meet with other CIOs and manufacturing companies, I hear the same issues over and over again. The first is there's a concern about lack of integration between their current technology and the modern tools out there today, such as business intelligence. Two, they, they have a fear of both the real cost and the opportunity cost of replacing their current solution. And because it just looks like such a huge mountain to climb. And then three, many doubts about the effectiveness of updating the current solution or the current technology. And I just wanted to ask, are any of these concerns of yours? If you ask the right questions, they're going to say, they're all concerns of mine. And you want to let them start talking about that and giving you, filling you in all of the areas of questioning, the pain, priority, process, and environment. One of the things we tell our folks is that the best call that you can possibly have is when you use the transition statement and you ask one question and they answer every other question you have. Three. So always sound great on every call is this, and I call it the whale. And what I mean by the whale in my world is a company that invests 75 grand on training or speaking. Right. And I land two whales every year in my business. No, no, whatever marketing I do or don't do. But mm -hmm. the truth is I never know when I'm going to get a whale. Right. So every phone call, genuinely, I treat my little brain, this is the big one. And often it isn't, right? I get two a year. But when I get the whale, I sound really good. And I mm -hmm. treat every call that they could be. Four. How does an email grab your attention, for instance, Mark? What's an email that you would open as opposed to all the other ones that you just ignore? Well, first of all, the email has to be smartphone friendly. Mm -hmm. This is one of the big problems. People, people write these great, oh, that email looks good. You know, they're writing it on their desktop. It looks really good, but it looks pretty pathetic on a smartphone. You see, there's two things that really come into play. Well, three things. One is what I call the one swipe rule. If, if I can't read that email on one swipe on my smartphone, I'm going to delete it. One swipe. Think about that. Mm -hmm. One swipe. But how you get to that is you got to have a subject line and the first 150 characters have got to be just grab you. If they don't grab you, you're going to delete. Five. Go research before you ever meet the person. Go research who they know, and you can use LinkedIn to do that, or you can use society rosters to figure out who they might know. And then you walk into that meeting with the name of the person you mm -hmm. want the introduction to, and you just say, hey, um, hey, John, do you happen to know, you know Fred Diamond? And then um, with that, I, I already know that you know him, right? I saw that you guys right. are connected on LinkedIn. And so the customers aren't stupid. They, they know what you're going to do. You're asking for an introduction. So if you, you'll mm -hmm. never get rejected. If they, don't, if they don't feel comfortable, they will just play stupid. They'll play dumb and say, yeah. oh, I actually don't own that well. But what happens mm -hmm. most of the time is they'll say, yeah, absolutely, I know Fred. We've known each other for a long time. And then you just ask for an introduction. You don't use the word referral. Uh, refer, the word referral has all this baggage around it. And the other thing that is uh, really wrong in most of these books is this is not the time to get greedy and ask for dozens of referrals. Yeah, right? yeah. Just go in and ask for one, make the one work, and then you can always come back to the well and ask for another one. And if mm -hmm. you do that, you'll end up creating these champions that will introduce you to people all the time. Six. Give me your definition of what you mean by personalized prospecting. Yeah, it's, I mean, fairly simple. It's, it's basically using uh, some insight or topic uh, that the prospect can relate to, to, to build a bridge. 
um, um, you know, you mentioned you're from Dublin. So if yep. I went to a good Irish pub there or to the Guinness factory and I mentioned that, that would get me, uh, you know, a little bit more higher attention in, in your, uh, in, in your inbox as opposed to someone that doesn't mention that. In the same yep. way, I'm a Liverpool fan. If someone said that to me, you know, so it's finding those little nuggets, uh, professionally or personally that you can use to sort of, uh, at least, at the very least, I mean, people might know that you're sort of, uh, you know, you're using this to to, uh, to, right. to get to, to gain favor, but at least you've taken the effort. And then some people will give you credit for that and say, well, look, the guy's taking effort. It's not just like I'm not another number on his list. Seven. Seven. This guy was patient. He began with flattery mm-hmm. and asking, either asked for advice. He pretty, pretty much said, hey, thanks for connecting. I love connecting with, you know, specialists like you, da, 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 da. And that was it. A a couple of days later, he responded again saying um, he asked me what was, you know, the latest tips and techniques and strategies that I'm finding that's working in my industry. And we dialogue back and forth for like a couple of weeks. And eventually I realized that I was a prospect for him (laughs) and I and I had no idea. 